Proper MIG shielding gas flow is critical to making quality wells. We receive inquiries asking what MIG shielding gas flow rate should I use? Some ask, what gas pressure do I set? Unlike oxy-fuel welding where gas pressures are set, with MIG welding the gas flow is much lower and flow rate is set, not pressure. Additional information about the reason is presented in this video. One cause of confusion is a common flow control device used on cylinders called a regulator flow gauge sets pressure above a very small orifice to establish the flow rate in cubic feet per hour CFH. Note the output gauge is calibrated in CFH, not pressure PSI. This control system is called choke flow, where the pressure automatically changes to compensate for fluctuations in flow restrictions. It requires an excess of 25 PSI above the flow control orifice or needle valve to function. Flow restrictions occur when MIG welding due to spatter buildup in the nozzle, gas diffuser, and bends in the gun cable. Gas pressure typically varies from 3 to 8 psi. But if set at this low pressure, variations in restrictions would change flow. Choke flow compensates for these restrictions. Several factors determine the gas flow rate needed to achieve quality shielding of the weld puddle. This chart defines suggested ranges and is available free at netwelding.com. Note a small nozzle size uses lower flow. While most industrial welders use 5 8 inch ID nozzles, for small diameter wire sizes, a half inch ID nozzle is common. The minimum flow rates suggested are usable when making a fillet weld in a low draft environment. Plates being welded help retain the shielding gas and are also effective in blocking drafts. The range labeled typical flow settings will handle butt welds where there is no vertical plate to help retain the shielding gas or assist in blocking drafts. As wire size, welding current, and nozzle to work distance increase, gas flow rates should increase. In the presence of drafts, higher flow rates can be used up to a limit. It is important to avoid creating excess turbulent flow that will pull air into the shielding gas stream. In 1893, Osborne Reynolds defined the flow rates that establish smooth lamellar flow, which is needed for quality mix shielding, versus turbulent flow that causes moisture-laden air to be mixed with the shielding gas stream. The Welding Institute in the UK defined the maximum flow rates needed to maintain lamellar flow. Also in a recent published article, the manager of welding research for Praxair states, flow rates in excess of 50 CFH cause atmospheric gases to be pulled into the gas stream, causing poor weld quality. Lab tests in a 4 to 5 mile an hour control draft showed 45 CFH flow rate had less internal weld porosity as measured by x-ray than 65 CFH supports the suggested 55 CFH max flow with a 5 8 inch diameter nozzle. If drafts exceed about 4 to 5 miles per hour when MIG welding, a windshield should be used. That can be as easy as positioning your body between the source of the draft and the weld. A simple windshield can also be made from sheet metal and moved as welding progresses. A larger 3 quarter inch ID nozzle allows increased shielding gas flow up to a maximum of 65 CFH, but no higher. Unfortunately, some folks believe if some is good, more must be better when it comes to setting shielding gas flow. We often see flow meters with a ball pinned to the top of the flow gauge. We have measured flow rates of 125 to 150 CFH at the gun nozzle when needle valves are fully open. That is far too high for good shielding. When welding stops, increased pressure causes excess gas to be stored in the gas delivery hose, up to seven times the physical hose volume. 
This excess blasts out at each weld start with conventional gas control systems. We've measured peak flows in excess of 250 CFH at the weld start. This graph is from a fabricator where the gas flow rate at the weld start peaked at 225 CFH and exceeded 75 CFH for four seconds after the start. Note when our patented gas saver system was installed, peak flow in the gas blast at the start was significantly reduced. The welder at this repair weld station immediately saw the benefit. Welds are all ultrasonically tested and he was having significant problems with weld start porosity. He knew the high gas starting surge was a major cause. After six months of using the gas saver system, he said his porosity problems had been eliminated. Our patented gas saver system replaces the gas delivery hose from supply to wire feeder welder. It stores 80% less gas each time welding stops. The feeder end has a built-in peak flow limiting orifice. It retains system pressure so it purges air at the weld start area and maintains automatic flow compensation for the inevitable flow restrictions. It has no moving parts to wear or knobs to adjust. Welders appreciate the starting benefits. For more information about setting MIG shielding gas flow rates or our patented gas saver system, visit netwelding.com. With thousands of systems in use, our industrial customers have saved millions of dollars of wasted shielding gas while improving weld start quality. Thank you.